Uh, so it's my uh, great uh, pleasure and honor to be able to introduce you to my two colleagues, Jessica Smith and Karen Sunerein, who are going to share their wisdom with us today. Um, Jessica is a longtime foundation staff, and she works um, a lot in the plan giving area with you know, gifts and wills and the like, as well as uh, with our communications. And uh, Karen has been with us also like a good number of years. Uh, and she works primarily with donors wanting to make um, larger gifts, lasting gifts for uh, the ministries they care about. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Karen, who's going to start us off today. Karen. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm trying to advance, Ashley, but it's not advancing for some reason. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about who the foundation is. And you know, we were established in 2002, so we just celebrated our 20th anniversary last November. And um, what the foundation does is we provide services to the United Church of Members, as well as to all of the courts of the United Church. Next slide. We did start a strategic plan last year, and um, the strategic plan, we really like to foster deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice by attracting and deploying financial services. Next slide. We have four pillars in the United Church of Canada Foundation, and they are anti-racism, climate justice, communities of faith, and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Now, to start off with the anti-racism, the foundation is committed to becoming an anti-racist organization. And one of the ways we are doing that is through our Theological Education Endowment Fund, which supports theological education for um, theological schools, as well as for educational uh, centers. In particular, it sets... Uh, to address institutional racism and oppression in higher education. With climate justice, you know, in our new creed, it says that we want to live with respect to creation. And clearly it names the care for creation as a tenant of our belief and discipleship. And so we are very committed to, to respecting the climate and climate justice. We have an endow um, environmental fund as well as a peace and justice fund that helps support that. Uh, with our communities of faith, um, through capacity building, convening, granting, and careful stewardship of the funds entrusted to us, we support congregations, ministries, and programs that enrich the United Church of Canada. And, you know, there are endowments. So individuals and families and United Church organizations turn to the foundation to, um, to have a help, to have us help them create and manage their endowments and other long-term funds that support the ministry and missions that they love. And the last pillar is reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Um, you know, we were very committed to becoming an anti-racist church. And the foundation walks alongside the church and supports these import important efforts. We do have uh, a theological post-secondary uh, education fund, an indigenous, sorry, not a theological, an indigenous post-secondary endowment fund that does just that. It supports indigenous peoples who are getting their post-secondary education. And that's just one of the ways that we uh, inspire and try to become uh, a church that recognizes Indigenous peoples and supports them. Any and all of these and many, many more uh, endowments and funds that you could give to are all on the unitedchurchfoundation.ca website. And now I'd like to turn it over to Jess, and she'll be talking to us about um, who uh, we provide services to. So, um, Ultimately, the best success for everyone will come when these groups are not siloed, but are more like a Venn diagram. Um, so we can deepen our relationships and everything will work together towards the same purpose. So we say we provide service to individuals, grant seekers and organizations. Um, individuals, this can be donors, fund holders um, and other friends of the foundation. 
grant seekers. Uh, individuals can also be folks who are seeking grants, scholarships, academic awards um, for their programs, projects, and other work within the church. Um, and organizations. Now, these organizations can also be grant seekers as well, uh, and donors and fund holders. Uh, Long-term gifts to the United Church of Canada Foundation can include uh, bequests and other planned gifts and endowments, and they create lasting change within the United Church. Uh, people who make long-term gifts to the foundation have provided stable and dependable uh, support for their congregations, funded the building of nonprofit housing, supported peace and justice work, as well as mission and service um, through the foundation's funds. Like I said, long-term giving uh, includes endowments, and that is why we're here today. Uh, trusts and other long-term funds. Uh, Karen will talk a little bit more about the difference, not the difference, but she'll, she'll go into uh, what endowments are. But trusts are long-term funds, uh, which are intended to be expended to zero at some point in the future. Um, and number three, there are bequests, life insurance, RSPs, RIFs, TFSAs. Um, these are another way that you can uh, make a planned gift uh, to support your church or whatever ministry in the future. Bequests are making a gift in your will. Uh, you can name the foundation as the beneficiary of your life insurance policy, um, your RRSP, your RIF, and your TFSA. And you can do those um, inside or outside of your state with different ta tax implications for each. If you'd like to go uh, further about that, we will have a webinar in the future about different plan giving vehicles. Um, or you can take down my contact information in the end and we can talk further about plan giving options. But today we are here to talk about endowments. Okay, what is an endowment fund? The first bullet there says legacy and recognition. So a legacy is a gift you leave in your will and it gives way into the future. And recognition, you can name um, a, a an endowment, say for in memory of somebody or like the Sunarine Family Endowment Fund for education. That could be a way that you could get the recognition in there. Long-term benefits for ministry and mission. And uh, like I said, it, it you don't touch the capital. So it's the preservation of the capital. So it's in perpetuity, which means it doesn't get touched. So it's a long-term benefit. And ministry and missions, people in churches, it's a dependable and steady source of revenue so that they can depend on it every year at the same time every year. If you've given it to say your church and it's for the music program, they can depend on that, whatever, 5,000, whatever the amount is. And it might vary a little bit, but it doesn't vary all that much. So it is a dependable source of income. And then the foundation will steward the funds, ensuring that its purpose best serves your interests. When you write the endowment plan, um, we are by law have to abide by what you say. So you can be assured that whatever the ministry mission that you want your donation to go to, it will be going to that well into the future. And now Jess is going to talk a little bit about um, who may establish an endowment fund. Who can establish an endowment fund? You can. Um, individuals, couples, families can establish an endowment fund together, Community of faith, communities of faith and other UCC organizations uh, can come to the foundation either with funds that they already have um, invested elsewhere, maybe you're not happy with the returns that you're getting with your investment firm, and you'd like to transfer those to the foundation. Um, or maybe the sale of a building or other asset, or you received a bequest or another planned gift which has left you with a sum of money that you'd like to use to provide long-term support uh, for your ministry. Or in the case of churches who've closed, um, we carry on the legacy of that ministry. So what I'm saying is anyone can establish an endowment fund. Uh, hopefully the flexibility appeals to all ages, life stages, congregation sizes and location circumstances. Um, there's no minimum amount to establish an endowment fund. Um, and the terms can be amended by mutual agreement at any time. And you don't, you, we don't want you to feel locked into um, 
what the original agreement is, you can make an amendment at any time and you can also set it up to support more than one beneficiary. Um, if there is a camp, as well as your congregation that you're interested in supporting or mission and service, um, you can set it up so that the streams of income can flow to all, uh, all of those ministry. Um, personal endowments, um, the capital is held, like I said, in perpetuity, so the capital does not get touched. Um, when you want to start granting out, the minimum amount to grant out is 15000 So Jeff said there isn't a minimum. So you can start an endowment with $1,000, but you have to wait until it reaches 15000 in order to start granting. Grants are directed to the congregation of your choice. Like I said, we have to give it to where you said you wanted it to go. Typically, we distribute 4.25% of the average value. So that means over the last two years of the endowment, we will take the average and then give 4.25% to your ministry mission that you want to, to go to. Um, it's a 1.5 administration fee, um, which I mean is a, a little bit of an amount. What's nice about that is, is that it's the foundation that's you know investing it with our partners and um, it it's secure and it's safe. And um, you don't have to worry about what's going on in the market and things like that. So it's a little bit of a fee in order to give you comfort. And you can name your fund. Like I said, it could be a legacy naming. You know, after you pass, it would be your family name or your personal name, or you could name it for somebody in memory. Jess, now you're going to talk about organizational endowments. Organizational endowment funds. Um, these provide long-term stable support for your ministry, or as I mentioned in the case of um, congregations that have closed, can carry on the legacy of your ministry and your community or, or uh, whatever the focus of your, uh, your ministry was. Um, they can be established with a single gift um, or transferred to the foundation, and they can be added to over time. They can be added uh, if you have other... Um, large sums of money that come to you, you can contribute that to your fund or individuals can make gifts to the fund at any time. We can set up um, a specific donation page that will be just for your fund or people can use uh, gifts of securities to contribute to your fund as well. Anybody who makes a contribution to the fund um, through the foundation will be eligible for a charitable gift receipt for the amount of their donation. Same as the personal funds, there's a $15,000 granting threshold. That can be um, flexible as well uh, if 15,000 is the minimum, but if you wanna raise it higher than that so that the grants are more substantial, um, you can raise it to a higher number than that. You can also set it, um, or sorry, the, the base granting rate is 4.25% uh, for endowment funds, 4.25% of the average balance of the fund over the previous eight quarters. Um, and it's maintained, tracked and reported on by the foundation. We can give you regular reporting um, on an annual basis, a semi-annual basis, a quarterly basis, um, and you would receive the reports by email or by mail, whatever um, is convenient for you. Um, and these can be set up to support more than one stream or more than one uh, ministry, uh, something specific, something more general. Um, an organization can establish a fund to support their uh, music ministry, for example, um, if you're left a bequest that says that they, the, uh, the terms of the bequest are to support mi uh, music ministry. Uh, you may want to use that bequest to set up a fund uh, at the foundation to support that ministry long term. Or children and youth ministry, you may want to set up a fund so that that bequest um, will continue su to support children and youth ministry um, into the future. Uh, we have a few stories, some examples of funds that have been um, established over the of recent years at the foundation. The first one I'm going to tell you about is the Transformational Learning Fund, um, which was established by the McNeil family because they wanted to support uh, individuals who need resources to improve their socioeconomical status or uh, increase their transformation, transformative leadership. 
It was started by Dorothy and Ken Lee McNeil, who uh, met each other at uh, Atlantic Christian Training Center. It's now called the Tatamagush Center. Um, and they really felt transformed by what they learned there. And they felt that um, this is the type of thing that they wanted to support. So um, they made a gift in their lifetime to establish the fund and they completed, uh, the, the fund uh, became active um, upon their death with a gift in their will. So it would start granting um, after we received that gift in their will. So we did. And uh, now the fund is, is active and it provides bursaries uh, to students who are enrolling in educational uh, programs in the United Church of Canada, uh, who can demonstrate uh, an openness to being transformed um, through a learning experience. Uh, so people apply through the foundation um, and they can receive grants from this amazing fund. Karen? For the endowment to church and mission and ministry, um, unlike the transformational leadership uh, learning fund that uh, Jess just talked about, this person really wanted to see her donation in action. She had a substantial amount of money. And so what she did was she did an endowment fund specific to the church that she went to. And then she also did an endowment fund for mission and service. And, you know, she talked to me about mission and service and how her, she used to have those little, they used to have those envelopes where they gave um, their donation and her aunt sat her down and told her why she was supposed to give to her general church because you want to support the ministries and missions that support you through your daily life. But she said, we always have to make sure that we have enough to give to others who aren't as fortunate as we are here. And so that's why she gave a substantial amount as well for the Mission and Service Endowment Fund. And anybody could um, support that Mission and Service Endowment Fund if you so choose, because uh, Mission and Service is uh, a point where you really love and you want to help those uh, in Canada and around the world. Yes? So we have the Mission and Service Endowment Fund, but um, many people have set up their own funds to support mission and service as well. Um, in the past couple of years, we've actually had a couple of families come to us and create memorial funds for their in, in the name of their parents to remember the lives of their parents and their, their dedication to the church. Uh, one of them is uh, called the Daryl, or sorry, the Fern and Oscar Goodlickson Fund. And it was established by Daryl and Craig, who are their sons. And they really wanted to honor the, the dedication of their parents who lived through the Great Depression and the Second World War, and who always had that devotion to every church community that they lived in. They loved mission and service. They were great stewards of the land um, and just felt such joy being members of the United Church of Canada. And so they knew that the best way to honor them was to um, take a little bit of money that they received from their parents um, in, the, in their parents' will and create a fund to honor their, their legacy. Um, so this fund was created about two years ago and um, will now continue to provide support to mission, mission and service on an annual basis. Um, and uh, Daryl and Craig have committed to adding to it over the years as well, you know, to remember their, their parents on special anniversaries, birthdays, things like that. And they've opened it up to their families to uh, contribute to it as well so that they can uh, keep the memory of their parents alive and also the, the, the spirit of their love of the United Church of Canada. <clears throat> um, and my last... Um, Example here, St. John Stevensville United Church. Uh, there were very generous congregants uh, who passed away and they left an incredible gift, uh, $10 million to St. John Stevensville United Church. And they had a, an, an agreement with the church that um, the church would invest these funds <clears throat> and create three specific funds to um, support the ministry of that church in perpetuity. So um, in late 2021, St. John Stevensville uh, made the commitment to transfer $10 million to the foundation and establish these three long-term funds uh, to support daily church uh, administration, religious programming, and, and worship, and charitable outreach, which are pillars of that ministry and also were very important to those folks who left the bequest to that church. Um, 
so St. John Stevensville is going to be able to uh, continue their dedication to these things uh, and their community far into the future because of this. And uh, we, although we're, we're so excited that this gift is, is very large, uh, we have so many examples of smaller um, but just as impactful gifts from other organizations as well. So um, while this is one that is, is uh, exciting for us to bring up, um, <clears throat> we are just as happy to talk about the smaller endowments that we have as well. <clears throat> and I'm sure that the endowment holders and those congregations and communities of faith would be just as happy to tell you about the amazing impacts that those um, funds have on their community and their community of faith. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I can see the chat is kind of filling up with some questions here. <clears throat> Let's see. Yes, um, we do have we do have a couple uh, questions in the chat um, and a few that have have been sent to me as well. Um, so maybe we could um there's some questions around the uh how grants are made in the in the granting rate and so i wonder um jess or karen if you just say a little bit more about that in terms of um how that how that's calculated how that works go ahead jess <clears throat> Right, so our, our base granting rate is 4.25%, and that is subject to change um, based on CRA regulations. Uh, CRA moved to, uh, to uh, change the base granting rate across um, charitable foundations um, so that more of the funds that are held by these foundations are doing good in communities, uh, which is ultimately what their purpose is. Um, so we are now at 4.25% across the board for our, uh, our base rate. We do have funds um, based on the, the different terms of the funds. Some are at 6% and some are higher than that. Um, endowment funds, though, will generally be 4.25% because that is giving us the, the good balance between um, um, having a, a grant that's going to make an impact um, but also growing the fund as well to continue to be able to make those grants over a, a period of time. If you were to choose a long-term fund, you can, uh, a long-term fund, which is intended to be uh, drawn down to zero at some point in the future, you can uh, choose to have a set amount that can be granted each year. You could say, we want $1,000 each year until it reaches zero, or you can, you can set it at 6% and you it just draws it down uh, at a at a more uh, uh, at, at a quicker rate, so that you can, you know, get to the the end of the term of the of the fund. Um, yeah. The yeah. Sorry, Sarah. Go ahead. Um, and I was just going to say, there's a question too about how that relates to um, returns, and so and and a question actually about what returns have been in general. Do you want me to answer that one? <laughs> Sorry, something's weird with my microphone. Okay. Kind of going in and out. Um, so as it as it relates to returns, um, I would say it it doesn't. Um, uh, um, to this point, uh, it hasn't returns have, have been so good that it has it doesn't have to eat into um, any other point portion of the, the funds that we're holding. Um, so of course, this year is much different than the past uh, two years. I think last year, our um, our rate of return was, or maybe I'm thinking the year before, 13%. It was 2021, yes. Yeah, 2021. Um, and of course, last year, and then uh, to begin this year is different than that. Um, yeah. So... Sorry. I'll put our um, 
our long-term rates. Yep. Chats. That's what I was just trying to pop up on the it's screen. 9. Here. 8, was it? I can't remember. <laughs> so the five-year rate is 7% and the 10-year rate um, is eight and a quarter. So even with the granting rate of four and a quarter and the um, um, administrative fee, there's still money that's reinvested uh, over the long term in the funds to ensure they maintain their buying power hedge against inflation. Um, yeah. Uh, the questions are coming in fast and furious now. <laughs> so um, there was a question I just saw about um, if somebody was to set up an endowment fund uh, for their church, would they have to indicate the terms in their will? Um, yes, uh, if if that's the so you could either start the, the fund with the foundation during your lifetime. Um, and we can set everything up and it can be activated with the gift in your will. And you would just say that the uh, the terms of the, the bequest, the bequest is to go to the foundation and it's to activate the so-and-so fund. Um, I guess the, the more complicated way would be to put set out those all of those instructions in your will um, and not start it with the foundation uh, in your lifetime, um, which is a fine way to do it. It's of course easier on everybody if you set it up uh, during your lifetime, but yes, you can set it up in your will and you can say that you want this and this and this to happen. Um, it's easier if you do it during your lifetime, just in case there are any changes that you wanna make to it. Um, it's easier and of course cheaper to make those, those changes with the foundation instead of changing your will. Um, so yeah, you can, you can establish the, well, you can start the fund uh, agreement with us during your lifetime, and you can set it so that it will be established with the gift in your will. And that is the easiest way to do that. Sarah, can I address what Heather and John asked? Um, you don't see, okay. It says, no, I would like, yes, to, yeah, I would like yeah. to hear some comments about why the congregation um, might choose the UCC foundation rather than the local community foundation, say for something like uh, perpetual care of a church cemetery. Um, mm -hmm. And Heather and John, thanks for the, the question. You know, I would just like to say that the foundation is closely linked with the United Church of Canada. We know very well the ministries and mission of the United Church of Canada. Our strategic plans are very closely aligned. So um, another, another community foundation might not know any of that. And I just think that uh, the foundation represents the communities of faith in and around all of Canada. And so I think we just have a unique perspective in being able to help support you and to uh, align you with what you would wish to happen um, from a faith perspective. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very well said, Karen. The other thing to know is that some, if not all regional councils have uh, limitations about sending money outside of the church to things like community foundations in terms of uh, long-term assets. Mm -hmm. um, the, so that's something to to think about as well. But Karen, your your point about the fact that we know the church, we know communities of faith, we understand um, what it takes to maintain uh, cemeteries, as per your example, um, is is really really key. Yeah. Um, and then you can be sure too that you know the fees that we do charge enable us to manage the 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 long term funds and provide support to the church um, as it goes forward. So there's that aspect as well, I would say. Um, and um, so just scrolling through the chat here, Shirley has asked, can an individual church set up their own endowment fund and have it run in perpetuity? Yes, <laughs> that's what we hope. Yes. yes. Yeah. And what's nice because it's with the foundation then you know, we manage it and you don't have to worry about it or, you know, where are we going to change the investment to? Because this is going down. Like, it's just, you you have the security that a foundation is behind it, making sure that it's invested well. Mm -hmm. um, Dave uh, asked about an alternative for surplus funds. And I would say it depends, Dave, but the foundation's really set up for long-term things. So if you're going to need that in less than 10 years, 
probably better to um, uh, figure something else out, but we do have affiliate investment managers that might be helpful in that case. Um, there was a question about donations to the foundation. Um, is a donation to the foundation charitable? Uh, can you get a tax, charitable tax receipt for that? Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. And um, Patricia was asking about, like, what is the process to set up an endowed fund? So, first of all, come to us and tell us uh, your intentions. Let us know what your ideas are, uh, your your impetus for starting a fund. Uh, whether it's your your community of faith or an individual or your family, uh, how you're looking to set it up. And if it's something that you want to uh, set up now or if it's something for the future, um, once we have that all set up, we can do a, a draft of an agreement for you, send it to you for your perusal. You can look at it and let us know if there's anything uh, that you need to change. Once we have that, once we're in agreement on the agreement, uh, we'll sign it, you'll sign it, and um, it's ready to go. You can, so in the agreement, it'll say whether you're making a gift now, um, and then you would make a gift. We would take it. You can make the gift by uh, cash or securities, however, whatever makes sense to you. Um, and we will invest it. Uh, if it's not to the granting threshold yet, or if the uh, agreement states that granting will come later, um, then it will remain invested until it's ready to grant. Um, and we will report to you on whatever basis we've set out as well, whatever basis we've agreed upon. So step one, come to us and let us know your wishes. And then Craig did ask, I don't fully understand the references to the 4.25 distribution policy. Is this the minimum or maximum? And he also said that it's in perpetuity. So how is the two years established, um, you know, getting the amount that we have to pay? So the 4.25 is established by uh, Canada Revenue Agency. That's the minimum of what we give every year for an, an endowment. And then the eight quarters prior to when we give the grant out, we see where it was in that eight quarters, what the value of the endowment was for that eight quarters. And then we do 4.25% of the average of what that value was over the last eight quarters. So the first few will be um, less because it'll be basing it on empty yes. quarters. Yeah, just the two quarters if it's just, the, you know, yeah. So that um, actually ties into another question that I have about how soon do funds start granting? So um, it can start granting in, in the following year that uh, what, when it reaches our next grant granting uh, cycle or whatever you've based your um, uh, the schedule on. Um, recently, we did have a congregation who asked to grant a little bit earlier than that because they wanted to show the value of it to uh, the, the leadership wanted to show the value of that to their congregation, that coming to the foundation was a good idea and they wanted to show that um, it was a good idea. And so we were able to grant to them uh, within I think about six months. Um, and they went back to their the, the congregation to say, look at this, we, we've got our grant early from the foundation. Um, this was a great idea and we're so excited that this is gonna support us um, into the future. And the congregation was so happy to know that uh, entrusting their funds to us um, made sense to them. And uh, so, like I said, it, it can grant, uh, it'll, it'll grant in the next year, but if, the, if there needs to be some flexibility that that can also be, be worked out between us. Sarah, Dave asked, is the foundation wholly owned by the United Church of Canada? Yeah, I put uh, I put a snippet of an answer in the chat, but essentially, oh. as a charitable organization, there is no owner, right? Yeah. So, and it is a separate, independent, with its own board. Um, but our purpose is to support the church, and so um, so we're very closely aligned. My job is actually half time with the foundation, half time with the um, 
with the church to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're working well together. And there was um, an agreement between the church and foundation on who's going to do what and how we're going to collaborate. Um, Karen, Jess, I don't know if you want to say anything further about that. I too work half and half as well. I work with the United Church of Canada and I work in the United Church of Canada Foundation. So obviously we're very affiliated, closely affiliated. <laughs> yeah. Um, Patricia uh, asked about, does an individual need, or individual or organization need to be connected to the UCC to set up an endowment here? No, they don't. Um, but it, the endowment does need to, um, at least in part, support UCC ministry. Um, so you don't need to be affiliated. I told you before about the memorial funds that were set up by children to support mission and service. Those children, um, not the one that I told you, but I told you there were a few. There was another one where none of the children uh, were affiliated with the United Church of Canada. It just happened to be something that their parent was very important to their parents. Um, so we report to, to them on this fund that, that they set up, but they have no other affiliation with the United Church of Canada. Um, so short answer, no, but uh, United Church Ministry does need to be named as uh, at least one of the beneficiaries of the income. Um. I've just put a link in the chat to um, our report page on our website that's got both our annual reports and our financial statements. Uh, somebody was curious about this. So um, yeah, as of December 31st, 2022, the foundation had about uh, 90 million in um, endowments and other long-term funds. Um, so it's a, it's, quite a testament to the generosity of United Church folks um, and their desire to support mission and ministry across the church and over time. So really grateful for that, the trust that um, people have placed in us with that. Um, any other questions that we have, uh, that we have missed? I think we've been, we've been trying to keep on top of what's in the chat anything one just came oh. sir can ucc invest stock donated from a parishioner and if so what return on average do you do you achieve mm -hmm. um so we we don't invest that stock uh what you can do is transfer it to us um and we can either <clears throat> uh liquidate and send you the the proceeds of selling it um or if it's if if there are no uh, terms, if it's uh, not uh, designated, if it's an undesignated gift and that there's no um, additional terms on what it's to be used for, then of course you can you can start a fund with it as well in the foundation. Um, the return on average would be the same as what Sarah put in there that uh, further up in the chat. Uh, long term rate, five years, seven percent, and ten year. 8.25%. Um, there's, there's no, um, there's no difference between the funds that individuals uh, establish and organizations establish. It's all in the same pools. <clears throat> yeah. You can transfer, as Jess said, you can, you can transfer stocks or mutual funds. Um, but then we sell them and either send them direct to a congregation or place them into a fund as per um, your wishes. And then the great thing is you have no capital gains. That's right. Yeah. That's great. Yes. So it seems kind of like we're coming to the end of our, our discussion, but I would uh, encourage you if you have additional questions or um want more information, please do give us a call or, or email us. We would love to hear from you. And uh, there we go. Jess and Karen's information is up on the screen. So we do have our toll-free numbers, our emails, and of course the website. So I want to thank everybody so very much for joining us today and for your interest in uh, endowments and, and long-term support for ministry. And um, wish you a very 
pleasant rest of your day wherever uh, wherever you are.